Hi everyone. This is Sia Shubhi Perewal here, and today, as promised, I have come to teach you business communication. Remember, we discussed that paper one business communication is the most important paper for your CSET exams, right? Because not just fifty marks, but even the thirty marks of presentation and communication skill depends on this. So. we need to make sure that we study this really really well now why do you think communication is so important that icsi has included up to 40% of your weightage of the exam in communication see in today's times it is understood that communication is one of the most important things after your academics let's take an example say i also clear my cs and you also clear your cs I scored fifty five percent, and you were probably a rank holder. And when we go for an interview, or say when we are going for practice, and we go to meet a client, what would happen? It is not just the marks that would be seen, but how well we both communicate with each other would be seen. If I communicate well, even with fifty five percent marks, it is understood that it is me who gets an upper hand. So communication is very, very, very important. and what is communication guys if you see most of this communication skill workshop which is going on in the market it would just focus on you speaking communication is not just speaking it's not it's speaking is one side right communication is complete only when both the parties are actively involved so listening skills interpretation skills of that thing is also very very important so communication skill is not just about speaking but also about listening it's also about reading and getting to understand that it's also about your choice of words at the right places how you are able to use that words and um, how you write and how you interpret that your body language everything is involved in communication correct so in today's lesson we would be completing chapter 2 of your business communication chapter 1 is grammar which i will upload a separate video later let's start off with today with chapter 2 okay chapter 2 is about vocabulary i'm sure all of you would have heard this word vocabulary what is vocabulary see a dictionary has a lot of words thousands and lakhs of words is it possible for us is it possible for us to include all that words in our language in our day to day communication or writing language for that matter it's not possible we have a certain set of words which we use repeatedly and that is our vocabulary even if you are not using that word but if you see that word somewhere read that word somewhere someone is speaking to you in that and using those words you are able to understand what that means so that is vocabulary your knowledge of words is vocabulary now how to make sure that we have a really good vocabulary in the past batch we have done this exercise that in our whatsapp group every day i used to give three new words along with the meaning and sentence and i encouraged all the students to make their own sentence and send it on the group or use that word in your daily uh, language okay that same day you you supposed to use those three words as much as possible in that way slowly 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 over a span of a few months your vocabulary would increase by hundreds of words and since you are using it in your daily language it would become a part of you this is my bonus tip for you to remember vocabulary well and stay tuned after we finish the entire chapter i am going to give you one more pro tip okay so let's start off with our vocabulary chapter so this is your vocabulary chapter okay this entire material is basically your cset material only we have just changed a little bit here and there to make it a little more interesting and presentable that's all okay after finishing up our video i would encourage you to go through this this 
text the study material by yourself and solve some mcqs and trust me you would be good enough to say that my this chapter is finished for the exam probably one more revision later all right so let's start vocabulary is a person's own knowledge of words it may not be necessary that it's just a language and it's really useful to have a good vocabulary because today we can't keep up without any good treasury of words in our mind so basically what is vocabulary you need to remember it's your own knowledge of words what are the benefits okay see when you use a good vocabulary it does have a positive impact on others right now why it is important when we are reading comprehension whatever i am highlighting over here take a print out of your study material and highlight those words yourself okay it would be very effective it helps in reading comprehension this will improve your communication skills verbal as well as written verbal and written both gets improved when you have a good vocabulary it helps to improve your personal life social life professional life when well, truly really don't know about your personal life but social and professional life does get a huge boost when you have a good vocabulary how we will discuss that in detail also now so another thing which is important to know is that when you use a certain word like erudite erudite basically means having or showing knowledge or learning see the correct way to use those words also should you should be knowing it's not just enough to know the dictionary meaning of that word because exactly how we use that word is very very important to know there are sometimes when we do not understand the exact particular meaning of that word but we can comprehend when we uh, by comprehend what i mean is when we are reading it in a story or in a passage we can understand approximately what it is trying to say that is also good enough see you can say mr x was an erudite speaker but you cannot say that mr x's speeches were erudite so you can use it as a noun while saying defining a person that he is a erudite speaker but you cannot define his speeches as erudite oh i hope you understand what i'm trying to say now the words which you could choose to communicate with someone depends on the following factors the range of your vocabulary unless you know a word you would not be able to use it so another thing which is important is your range of vocabulary who are you communicating with see you need to understand who is your audience correct if i am speaking to a 3 year or a 4 year child i would not use words like devastating or amazing or awesome because the child might have difficulty understanding such big words i would try to use simple words with that child like good bad nice those kind of words same thing goes when we are speaking with someone who is not as educated as us say when you go to a local grocery shop and you try to talk to that grocery shop owner you would not use some high end words correct so you need to understand who is your audience you should know the literacy level of that person whether that person is senior or junior or how whether you should be formal or informal when we talk with friends we would say something like hey buddy how are you but you would not greet a senior person in your field like that right you would say hello sir so you need to understand about whether that person is senior junior formal informal the literacy level a lot of things makes a lot of difference another thing is whether while speaking you are using that word or while writing like when we used to write emails and letters we used to mention things like hope you are in pink of health with this pink of health we would not ask someone when we are speaking to that person right we would just say simply like hi how are you doing hope your health is keeping fine you would not say i hope you are in the pink of health so there are certain words which looks good only when used in the written aspect and not in the oral aspect okay then what are the various types of communication formal informal oral written this also would affect your vocabulary what is the message that you are trying to say whether it's urgency whether you have some disappointment whether there is the what is the level of accuracy so if, if something is really urgent you would say something like like uh, uh, you know like uh, i need this uh, i need this super quick make sure it happens that kind of lingo you would use but if you are disappointed in someone you would say alas or those kind of language you would use for uh, writing it 
So it depends on the feeling which you are trying to communicate. Then what is the context in usage of the words? You need to understand that there are certain words which can be used, conveyed in the wrong sense, okay? Um, I am remembering one very good example which happened some days back with me, okay? Uh, I was uh, like, I was judging one of the competitions where uh, it was a Hindi competition, okay? And the kids had to speak on Swami Vivekananda, okay? Now, what happened was, when the kids were speaking on Swami Vivekananda, most of the kids did not have Hindi as their first language, okay? A lot of them were based out of Tamil Nadu and they did not have Hindi as their first language. They were probably, uh, I mean, learning it in school. So one of the kids in that one minute speech, he told uh, Swami, he should have told something like Swami Vivekanand kehte hain, but he told it as Swami Vivekanand bakte hain. So can you understand the difference? Kehda is, means it's speaking something. And bakna is when you say something like, no, gibberish he's talking, unnecessary he is going on saying, in, in a bad way we some say uh, to someone, no, don't keep on doing quack quack. That kind of a way he portrayed it. So that was uh, the same word had a very different impact and different meaning when used in that sense. So you need to understand how you are going to use that word, what context you are going in. So you need to understand how you are using that word, what context you are using it, how that word will influence the others. Then there's a lot of important words, which it means different things at different places. Correct. Uh, it's not just words. See, even when it comes to food, right? All of you know that in China, cockroach and lizards is eaten. But how does it happen in India? In India, when we see a cockroach and lizard, we'll, we get this you feeling, right? Like, it's an insect for us. You would just shoo it away. We have, in fact, cockroach killers and everything. But in China, that is a food for them. So the same thing, the same word might mean different in some other country and have a completely different meaning in some other country. So one example is liberal. Okay, In Britain, liberal basically means broad-minded. And that's how we in India also use it. Because Indian English is very influenced by the British English, correct? So we use words like liberal means broad-minded, he's open-minded, he's chilled out, those kind of things. In America, liberal is used in a political standpoint, okay? You kind of, when you tell you're a liberal person means you are trying to tell that you belong to this political group kind of a thing where you are liberalists, okay? And that's not a very nice way of portraying it. It's kind of a political abuse for them. Since this is a, a CSET in a capsule course, I have to like, you know, shorten things up. If you want to know a little more about it, you can actually Google about this thing. It's very interesting. Then how do we improve the vocabulary? All right. We um, understand the root of the words. Good dictionary gives us all the changes. To choose words that communicate clearly with the appropriate tone, you should learn everything possible. All right. Let's move on. Okay. How would you choose the right words? Divine this part, simplicity. Let us keep things really simple. If you can convey the same meaning in a simple word, that would be more effective, right? See, everyone has their own range of vocabulary. All of you know who is the person who has an amazing sense of vocabulary, right? Mr. Sashi Tharoor. When most of his speeches and tweets, people take out their dictionary or go to Wikipedia and find out what's the meaning. So you need to keep things really simple. There are sometimes there is long and unusual words because we have to be more precise. That's okay. All right. And uh, for example, haven't, won't, and can't have no place in prose unless you have reproduced the text of a conversion. There is no set rule for using familiar words. The important thing is to avoid a show of pedantry. Underline this. What is pedantry? An ostentatious and inappropriate display of learning and undesirable complexity. See, what they are trying to tell you over here is very simple. They are saying... If the exact meaning in the field can be conveyed in a simple word, use that. But if you feel that you need to use a longer, complicated word to pinpointedly tell how you are feeling, then it's okay. Let's say you find this really beautiful dress in a mall. So you would say something like, this is such a beautiful dress. That's one way of saying it. 
but when you really really like something and you know uh, uh, you want to convey a word like this is such a chic dress this is this would look so elegant on me you can use those words because you're trying to be a little more precise in how you are feeling however you should not use some word just as a show off you understand it should not sound complicated it should not sound like we are just trying to you know show off your knowledge so that should not be there pedantry means an ostentatious what is ostentation a show off thing basically all right so when someone is rich okay you are rich but if you uh, like when you talk to someone there are some people who are very ostentatious about their wealth they would talk something like uh, i did this 100 crore deal i went for new zealand for a vacation we stayed in this properties that's just being ostentatious about your wealth that is not required when you are um, speaking or writing something no need to show off your range of vocabulary use familiar words the words with sharp and clear meanings don't try to use words which is not commonly used in that circle okay say for example instead of using more unfamiliar words and the word use try instead of using terminate use end so uh, this is how everyday conversations goes right everyday conversations we would not say we would not use words like say if you uh, fail in um, riding a bike okay you're just trying to ride a bike and you are not able to do it you fail in that for like you know once you fall down so i would say something like hey you can do it try again correct that's the normal way of using it but instead if i say you must not you must pursue your endeavors it sounds like unnecessary show off so that need not be done use words which your people are more familiar with next is jargon you can mark this as important guys because this can be asked in the exam what is jargon jargon is basically a word which is very unique to that profession every profession has its own unique words if you see two doctors talking and when they are discussing a case about a patient most of you would not be able to understand what he or she is saying because there would be so much of medically uh, medical language which would be used correct similarly even legal uh, people have their own lingo when you go further in cs when you come up to cs executive papers you also would be using a few of those words right right uh, ab initio it is void and those kind of words which is specific to that profession is known as a jargon okay for example the word operation for when uh, soldiers are talking about this when military people are talking about it operation basically means they have a uh, they are going to attack somewhere or they are going to have a, a certain uh, plan in mind that is an operation for them and for a doctor an operation is you know what is an operation right we also use operation in that terms so uh, like cutting up someone and you know doing something required for that person that is an operation a surgery basically okay so every operation has a different meaning in different trade in different industry okay now should we avoid all jargons in our writing no it's not possible because when two lawyers are talking they cannot avoid jargon jargon will come into the picture so one is a private language which the person in that particular field can understand other is wider acceptance of certain words and phrases in the general language used by the public there cannot be any objection if this kind of jargon is used in writing of course there cannot be any objection because when you are writing your answer sheets and cs executive exams you will also be using a lot of legal jargon in your words all right you would be using words like void you would be using words like ab initio you would be using words something like um, act act can me can have so many different meanings right so there is a lot of jargons involved then avoid using superfluous words or verbosity mark this also as important verbosity is an uh, important term it's an expressive style that uses excessive or superfluous words or using more words than necessary is a common weakness there are times when this has happened that um, not just in reading okay when you go uh, to attend some nice speeches what happens is that uh, the person was speaking really well okay his uh, but when we come out of it we are, we think that the content was basically the same which was he which he, he or she 
kept on repeating in different words okay so this is what i mean uh, you would have seen some jokes about students doing this right in the question paper when there is a simple question asked about write a note on something the person just knows one sentence about it and the same thing he has told in five different sentences that is what that is being verbosity it's just using words which is not doing anything about conveying the meaning of that part okay so this is about superfluous words when you just keep on using more words something like you know where i just want to say like uh, this uh, suggestion of yours is really practical and i would implement on this suggestion it can be said like this right but i would say something like your suggestion is really really nice i would actually think about this suggestion this is such a practical suggestion i have never come across anyone giving me this kind of a suggestion i think that this suggestion does have a lot of weightage to it let me implement it let me try this out practically so basically i am trying to say the same thing in different sentences and i'm just uh, using words which is not required so this is basically verbosity okay use short words if you can communicate better than using long words if you know a simple short word to the same thing you need to use that all right we have already discussed about this before then select the words for precise meaning try to say something which goes pin pointedly into what you are trying to say for example fewer and less means the same to some people but careful users select fewer to mean smaller number of items and less to means reduced value degree or quantity this is very important you can actually uh, like you know underline this and understand this as an example careful writers use continual to mean repeated but broken succession and continuous to mean unbroken succession let me explain this with few and less okay when we say that uh, i just have very few oranges left in my house it can be counted right there are four five oranges probably so i would say there are very few oranges left then i would say something like um, the milk is less in my house because milk cannot be counted okay it's not uh, can be counted in numbers so i would say something like i have very less milk in the house or i would say something like um, her uh, health uh, her she's a little less active today she's a little less uh, energetic today so that less can also uh, that less is basically used to make you understand the degree of something the uh, quantity the value but it cannot be counted so there is a small difference between few and less which is which you need to be aware of careful writers use continual to mean repeated but broken succession and continuous means unbroken succession okay so there is a small difference write this down in your notebook continual you can write it down in the study material sheet also continual and continuous very thin line of difference right continual means it's continuing but there is small breaks for like like for example i am pretty continual with my yoga practice so i go from like i generally do it every day but once in a while it gets broken okay probably some day it gets broken or due to some festival it might get broken so that is continual okay continuous is where there is nothing there is no break in between like for example cs executive if you are going for both the modules then your exams are continuous you would not have any break in between these days i think you have sunday's break when we used to give exams there was no sunday nothing eight days of continuous exams we had so that is continuous no break then this is very important according to me using gender neutral words see um it's very important to uh, i think to know that you need to use gender neutral words what happens is when we go to a big company say if you you would go to a really big company or a really big place you would assume that person in power would be a man most of us would do that the patriarchy is so deeply rooted in our uh, society that when we go to a big company we would say something like uh, can i meet the chairman of this company right now the chairperson if you are not sure whether that person is a man or a woman how can you say that can i meet the chairman of the company the person who is in control who is the chair chairman might be a woman also 
So you should always use a word like, can I meet the chairperson of this company? Because if you're not sure about whether it's a man or a woman. So very important to use gender neutral words when you are not sure about it. In fact, sometime back, I had seen a very beautiful video about a girl asking, that video had went, went viral, maybe you also would have seen it. There was this little girl who was asking her mother that why in her science book it is mentioned as, <coughs> sorry, it's mentioned as natural and man-made. So her mother told man-made means it is we who made it. Now why it's not human-made? Why are they assuming that man only had made it? It could be a woman also, no, who made it. So there are a lot of words which we are still using, which is not gender neutral. Okay. So in uh, if you know, like, if you're not sure about whether the person in power is a man or a woman, it's always better to use gender neutral words. Now, moving on to the next topic, that is synonyms. What is synonyms? I'm sure all of you would have heard of this word somewhere in your school level. Synonyms. In Hindi, we used to call it as Pariyayavachi Shab. One word and same meaning, many more words we are learning, right? So that is what is synonyms. Like easy, simple, light, effortless, smooth, elastic, flexible, supple. They basically more or less mean that have the same meaning. And these are those words. So they are basically synonyms. You can actually read through this once. It would be great because you might get a few MCQs about these. All right. Then begin, commence, start, initiate. Same meaning, right? It could be used in a little different ways. Like, for example, I would say something like, have you started studying? Okay. I would not generally use like, have you initiated your studies? Correct. So, but they more or less mean the same thing. Generally, we use begin, which is more formal and... Um, they started from their home, we say, the ship has set out on its voyage. If you use any other synonym in the place of set out, it would take on a different meaning. Two words may look alike and there, yet there would be a little bit of difference. So these words more or less mean the same, but how you are using it that time, it does have a little difference. We say, you know, English is sometimes a complicated language. You, you would say something like they started from their home, but you would not say something like they initiated from their home. That's the wrong way to protect, uh, project it, right? You would say something like um, the operation has been initiated, the work, the work has begun, or we have initiated the proceedings. That is the correct way to use initiate, okay? But when you're leaving from home, you would say something like they have started and not initiated. So you need to understand the little uh, nuances also in between. Let us go through a few more uh, synonyms. Adept, proficient, skilled. You're good with something. You say you are adept at something. My, photogra my photography skills is, uh, I'm adept at photography. I'm sorry. You would say something like, I'm adept at photography or I'm a very skilled photographer or my photographer, I'm a very proficient photographer. So these words more or less mean the same thing. Abstain, I would abstain from alcohol. I would refrain from drinking alcohol. Abridge, all of you would know something which is summarized or shortened. Abundant, a lot of it. There is abundant greenery in this area. We, um, we say uh, while practicing law of attraction, also people say this, right? Um, everything is there in abundance. I am an abundant child of an abundant universe. That is, that means there is enough for everyone. That's what they're trying to say. Accessories, all of you would know that, right? Belt, shoes, watch. It's all about how well you're accessorizing your outfits. So that's an accessory, basically something which is additional. Achieve, accomplish, etc. You can actually go through this. That is your synonyms. The next is a word which I want you to understand is antonyms. Exactly the opposite of synonym. Synonym is words which have the same meaning. Antonym is words which are opposites. Okay. So uh, if you are trying to say hot, you would say cold. Those were the common opposites which we learned when we were in school, right? So the same basically antonyms basically means opposites. Okay. Let's come across a few examples. Soft drink, hot drink, soft and rough texture. So the same soft drink has a different word called hot. 
but when it comes to texture it would be soft and rough please go through these antonyms abnormal normal accurate inaccurate i will just tell you something which i feel you would might not know yeah economical and extravagant he is very economical about his spending habits he does not waste money that much right she is extravagant in her purchases she does not even see the price tag of most of the things she would just spend a lot of money so she is extravagant diligent and lazy diligent means you are very uh, careful very um, sincere and the uh, dilatory or lazy is like yeah like yeah we will study tomorrow next day we will find out those kind of things okay then uh, another thing which i would like to tell you is Would be inferior, superior, import, export, loud word. Yeah, meager, plentiful is a common word, but an important one. Possible, come, uh, possible of uh, in being included in exams. Please for it. So yeah, please do go through this antonyms. All right. Then next that I would be seeing is your homophones. so now we are starting with homophones correct what is homophone homo basically means same right and phone is you all would have heard of this phonics classes which is going on for the kids these days where they teach you things like a says a b says b you know those kind of things so homophone basically means two words which are pronounced in the same way which have a similar sound when we hear it but the uh, but spelling is different and even the meaning is different right so those are homophones like stationary and stationary okay i'm just discussing a few important ones over here in this video i would really want you to go through all the words which is there on your material all right so stationary and stationary the ary stationary basically means an object which is not moving right in physics how we used to say this is a stationary object and this eroy would basically means the stationery shops that we have in our locality the where they sell the pen paper and all those stuff okay then there is access and excess access when you're allowed to access something my son is allowed to access my phone okay excess is when there is something too much okay we have excess of food left after the party so those things is excess this is a very tricky one where a lot of people get confused advice and advice okay there is a c and then there is an s c is when we mean it along with a noun okay that anyone can offer advice it is basically what is being told the suggestion that is being given okay so something like i tell you all of you should wake up at 4 am and study this is the advice which i am uh, giving you okay sorry this is an advice which i am giving you f why because this is involving you to take action it is talking about a verb so this is my advice to you when i say you no know, i really want you to study hard i want you to wake up at 4 am and study they they are my advice to you s e okay and advice c e is where um, you hear all the motivational speakers or you hear the general life advice is being meted out to you that is advice ce okay where it's a noun there is a very small thin line of difference between these two basically you just need to remember that the se advice means you are supposed to take some action okay it's a verb then eight and eight this all of you would know right eight is the past tense of each and eight all of us know what is eight bear and bear bear is that animal bear and bear is uh, like without it like you know um when you have very less furniture in your room someone would come and say you know your room looks really bare why don't you add a few things it's not enough that's what they're trying to say sell and sell sell is again two three types of things we also say cell phone we say the small room in the prison also as cell we even talk about a battery as cell so that is c e l l cell and cell all of us know what is cell right being selling something okay you're selling your car your phone all those things then homonym homonym is homo means same right 
and this in this nim it means that it has the same spelling but it sounds different and it is probably uh, means also totally different so this homonym means they are with the same spelling but they have more than one meaning the spelling is the same in homophone the sound was the same but spelling was different in homonym the spelling is also the same but the meaning is completely different in both the cases the meaning is different homophone and homonym all right let's see an example bat bat i'm afraid of bats that insect due to which is supposed to be that said that this uh, covid 19 happened then another bat is it's his first time at bat in the major leagues the cricket bat correct match match it could be a match stick match it could be a sport match mean mean right right i'm sure i'm right being correct is one right one right is when you are telling the direction to someone okay go towards your right so that is one right and being correct is also right both have the same spelling same pronunciation right right but meaning is completely different depending on the place you have used it then single word for a group of words mark this important this is a little different word avarice greed inordinate desire to gain and hoard wealth there are some stingy people no, who would just want to earn and they keep on collecting 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 the wealth they don't use it they don't take the um, basic pleasures of life which happens from wealth but they just like to uh, take the money and like hoard it keep it with them okay so this is what is called when someone is unnecessarily greedy you know you're not sharing that with anyone else you're not using it also you're just hoarding it hoarding it collecting it without using it okay so that is avarice something which cannot be taken by force impregnable amorphous when you are just learning something new right like i am an amorphous at shooting youtube videos it does not come naturally to me i'm not a professional at it right now so i am an amorphous at it fragile easily broken crockery is very fragile item in our houses okay please go through all this thing euphony pleasant sound i you, you would have read this in a lot of english proses the euphony of sounds was uh, to the ears was so nice so it's basically the nice sounds is called euphony okay then place where uh, the soul you would be knowing people who collect coins numismatic please learn all these words blood feud started by murder seeking vengeance this you would have learned if you uh, you would have read if you would have read some uh, murder mystery kind of books or something you know i have a personal vendetta against that person just because you are from a different caste or a different religion some people have grudges that is also called vendetta when you can actually kill that person also you know that kind of a mad person you are so that is what is vendetta then some words which commonly everyone uses a uh, commonly everyone does spelling mistakes in those word okay this can also be asked in your mcqs where they will ask you to choose the correct spelling okay which is the correct spelling like that they will give you options so abstence it is a s first and a c then a lot of people write ss both the time or a cc both the time it is an s first and a c then okay accommodate accommodate has a double c and a double m all right achieve this is the most common mistake people forget whether it is e first or i first for achieve most of the time it's an i first okay and not the e first so you need to remember this this is the most common mistake which happens and even this one calendar it's an ar and not a er then liaison it is i one more i is over here okay this is the correct spellings receipt e i not i e so this is see here i e is the correct one and e i is the wrong one here e i is the correct one but i e is the wrong one so you need to be careful about these things tomorrow there is just a double r no double m's and nothing just double r so spellings and pronunciations makes a huge impact on your uh, communication skills spelling errors is important this is a most common mistake mark this is important the ei and ie okay this there is not much difference when it comes to uh, spelling out the word i mean when it comes to speaking the word but there is a lot of difference when you are writing it down between ei and ie so this would come with practice like for example 
conceive, deceive, perceive, all these have EIs, okay? But most of the other words would have IE, like cheap, achieve, convenience, etc. Please, uh, I would request you to find out a little more words about this and go through it. E can be dropped or retained when changing the root word. For example, true changes to truly, but sincere would change to sincerely. So here we drop the E out, but here the E remains. From sincere itself, we just add an LY. Lose and lose are completely different, right? Lose means you lost something. Lose is a dress which is not tight fitting. It is loose, okay? It is very open and it's a little not coming into your, uh, it's a little big for you. So you would say it's very loose for me. So spellings, you would definitely get an MCQ on the spelling ones. So be careful about the spelling. When you're reading the study materials, pay a little more attention to the spellings, especially this EI and IE things and this true, truly, sincere, sincerely things. And the third thing is this doubles when they are used, like accommodate, tomorrow, which are the letters which is repeated and which are the letters which is not repeated. Be very careful about these things. Abbreviations, all of you would know where some things are accepted as abbreviated forms, like etc. We do not write the full thing. We just write ETC. Okay. So these are the few abbreviations. You can go through it. MA is Master of Arts. We say, no, she has done an MA in there. She has done a B, uh, she has a BCom degree. BCom is what? Bachelor of Commerce. But it's a commonly accepted abbreviation to use BCom. PROF for professor. Go through this. UNICEF, underline UNICEF is important, FICI is important. This all you already know. In basic chemistry, you would be knowing all this, CA, H2O and all those. Yeah. Then idioms and phrases are very interesting, okay? Mohavre, uh, we used to say in English, uh, in Hindi, sorry. That um, they basically are saying something, the literal meaning would be something else, but they are used in a different fashion. They are used to mean something else, okay? Like for example, boil down to, okay? The entire argument boiled down to the fact that he would not join the movement unless he saw some monetary gain in it. Gain in it. So pe two people are going on uh, arguing, 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 and then the person says, See the entire uh, see the entire thing finally boils down to whether I will get the payment or not. If I'm not getting the payment, I'm not interested in doing this. So basically, ultimately, whatever discussion has happened, ultimately it boils down to this fact only. Okay, cast aside, just throw it away, just reject it. That uh, because um, like you can say something like um, his uh, his uh, ideas and philosophy was totally cast aside, okay? They were not agreeing to it. <laughs> with a shilling. This is like um, when you just try to cut someone off with something very less than what they deserve, okay? Say a father had four sons and one of the sons had married outside his uh, wish. So he wanted to give his property to everyone. So say he had 100 crore, he get all the other sons... Uh, 30 crore, 35 crore and 25 crore and the fourth son, he just cut it off with one crore. Okay, so that is basically, I just cut him off with a shilling, something which is very less than what he should have got. Gloss over to ignore, okay. So I'm very good friends with uh, someone but she has this really bad habit of not picking up the phone whenever I call her. So I say like, I just gloss over these things, you know, like I just ignore these things. It's okay. That's what it means. That, uh, then we have another set of things like cast a slur upon. Mark, this is important, cast a slur upon. Many uh, men cast a slur on their own good name by some mean act. By your own words, own action, you have put a bad name for yourself, okay? Or for someone else. You have cast a slur upon. <laughs> if you marry outside uh, the community, the parents might tell that you have cast a slur upon our entire family, that kind of a thing. 
mark this is important to cut the gordian knot read this it's very interesting mark it is important the indian parliament threw out the bill for abolition of privity purses the government cut the gordian knot by abolishing the purses through a presidential ordinance if you are interested you should actually go on the google and search about it what it happened was after independence no all the rulers the kings who were there they had been promised a certain sum of money every month or every year whatever it was then indra or gandhi the uh, prime minister of that that time she took out a new ordinance and she told that from now onwards these rulers and kings will not get anything from the government's coffers okay because government itself was like poor that time okay it was not able to manage the country there was so much of poverty so they told that we are not going to uh, pay the rulers and all any or uh, any time so she just cut the gordian knot means it was a very bold measure but she removed this difficulty on how happened with uh, demonetization or it was a bold move right she cut uh, the mr modi had cut off uh, the difficulties or about people holding or this black money thing so it was a bold move and they removed a difficulty through it so it is known as cut the gordian knot to get the upper hand you would all or if you would know the meaning of to get the upper hand give and take policy also you would understand right you don't do something for free for anyone it's a give and take policy two brothers one brother hides the other brother's secret the, the other brother also hides his secret from the mother and it is told that we have a give and take policy that kind of a thing to have an axe to grind bigger nation supply arms to smaller ones because the former has their own axe to grind we know this reality right afghanistan pakistan most of these countries receive arms from um, this bigger nations because something basically they also want this okay so they kind of encourage all these things to make amends it's easy to make much ado about nothing please underline all these things to put the cart before the horse to rise to the occasion to take the bull by the horns this time i have decided i will study for the exams i will not wait for the next attempt i will take the bull by its horns i will just go for it like you know i'll do it kind of a thing deal with a difficult or unpleasant situation i'll take the bull by the horns that's what it means to take a leap in the dark these are common ones which you would be knowing from school level probably turn the tables suddenly uh, something becomes like you know when two people are uh, talking and that person is asking for a lot of money and then the other person uh, comes up uh, saying something like uh, if uh, you reduce your cost by 30% this is what i can provide for you in the future something nice and that would be like to turn the table suddenly the entire conversation becomes to your advantage or disadvantage Pakistan started with a blitzkrieg, but the superior tactics of our armed forces turned the tables on them. Blitzkrieg, all of you would be knowing. You would have studied in the World War Two. It would have happened. Pakistan came with a rush to attack, but our armed forces were also much, much better than them. And because of that, it turned the tables. They thought they would have an advantage, but it turned out to their disadvantage coming into our territory. there are a lot of idioms and phrases which you can read if you have doubts about any uh, idiom and phrases you can actually put it in the comments box and i will reply it over there there are a lot of idioms and phrases which is very difficult to finish in this one hour so please go read through all of them the foreign words and phrases this is your last topic almost foreign words and phrases open it to the latin phrase it basically means from the beginning okay this is important this is a basic word which we use then ab origin from the origin now you would have understood that ab is basically a latin phrase in which means from 
okay add add valorem according to value so add means according in latin and ab means from okay ad hoc appointed for a particular work ad hoc committee this is also very commonly used by us so underline this ad hoc also alma mater this also you would already be knowing a school or college which one has attended so uh, your previous uh, school and everything you become an alma mater of that school ala carte this all of you would be knowing you can uh, instead of uh, choosing to have a buffet breakfast you can order ala carte whatever is there on the menu you can order from there alter ego alternative personality intimate friend friend he is my alter ego we go everywhere together this is what alter ego means or uh, this word is important a posteriori empirical from effect to cause then uh, bona fide bizarre underline all this bon voyage these are important ones you can read through it simple ones sorry genda rest of the words is also to be read i'm not saying that only what i'm underlining those words will come but still uh, those are the important ones okay then de facto de novo entrepreneur all of you know elite all of you know en masse all together entourage is important when uh, prime minister goes anywhere or any other uh, cricketer comes from somewhere he has this group of people who come along with him that's an entourage ex officio is important by virtue of his position or status so some it is something like if you are supposing the president of your um, nature's club committee of school then automatically if someone who is the president of nature club also has to take over as the treasurer of book reading club maybe that is the norm in your school so what happens you become the secretary of the book reading club ex officio ex officio means because you are having one position you have to take up the other position so that's what it means pop pass social blunder wearing leather boots in uh, today's time is a huge pop pass fashion mistake that you are doing the social blunder that you are doing okay gosh it's so facto in toto in toto the entire thing i want uh, this uh, see i am uh, recommending something to you i don't want you to choose in that i want you to accept it in toto means i want you to accept my entire recommendation modus operandi how uh, what is my method of doing things okay you can read the other things please go through this latin abbreviations like example eg etc phd Yes. Right. So this is all about. So guys, this is all about your vocabulary chapter. I have tried to cover this chapter in as brief a manner as possible. So if you go through this entire video, read through that study material. If you have any doubt, drop it in the comments box. and we will also give you a uh, free mcqs to practice okay you can just get in touch with us on the whatsapp link provided in the description box and we would be more than happy to give you the 1000 mcq books so please kick start your preparation from today onwards and all the best for your exams we have to clear it ace it in the coming 50 to 60 days that we have right so 13 november exam 13th november is your exam kick start your preparations now and if you liked this do not forget to subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon and click the like button see ya